And let us sing, sweet Holy Spirit. Let us send the atmosphere in this place. Amen. Amen. Sweet Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Ah, uh, uh, God, we just welcome you in this place, God. We give you all the glory this morning, God. We give you all the praise this morning, God. Oh, you are the sweet Holy Spirit. Come on, just set the atmosphere so you can receive what God has for you. Hallelujah. Set the atmosphere of your heart. Set the atmosphere of your spirit. Set the atmosphere, Father God, so the Spirit of God can be conducive. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning, God. We bless you this morning, God. You are the sweet Holy Spirit, God. You are the sweet Holy Spirit, Father God. We thank you, Jehovah Sabaoth. We thank you, El Shaddai. We bless you this morning, God. Oh, God, we welcome you, Lord God. Oh, Father God, you are the dove, the beloved. Oh, Father God, you are everything that we desire you to be. We set the tone. Hallelujah. We ask you to touch us now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, move in this place like never before, God. Father, lose your presence. God, lose your anointing. Oh God, lift the people's heart to be ready to receive what you have to say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we thank you. We bless you, God. We honor you, Lord God. Father, we thank you this morning. Have your way, God. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Heavenly Dove. Hallelujah. Stay with us. Stay with us. Stay with us, God. We feel your presence, God. Stay right here with us, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Fill us with your love, Jesus. Anoint us afresh this morning, God. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you to bless this word today. Oh God, we ask you to cover it, Father, now. We ask you, God, to bring back to memory, Father, everything that you have poured out and everything that you have given, Father, within me, Father God. Decrease my flesh right now, God, and let your Holy Spirit increase in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. We shall leave this place, God. We shall leave this place revived. We shall leave this place renewed. We shall leave this place recharged because your presence is in this place, God. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty to praise you. Liberty for freedom. Hallelujah, God. We bless you. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I'm going to read two quickly before I begin. I just want to read the scriptures real quickly. Genesis chapter 8 and Genesis chapter 30 while you're standing. Might as well get that out of the way. Just turn your Bibles real quickly to Genesis chapter 8 and Genesis chapter 30. Amen. And I'm going to read just one or two verses of it. Genesis 8, I'm going to read just one verse. Genesis 30, I'm going to read one verse also. Amen. Two verses, I'm sorry. All right, so Genesis 1 says, But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark, and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Somebody said the waters receded. Genesis 30, Then God remembered Rachel. He listened to her and enabled her to conceive. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son and said, God has taken away my disgrace. Come on, God has taken away my disgrace. She named him Joseph and said, may the Lord add to me another son. Amen. And I want to read another scripture. You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read it real quickly. Second Samuel chapter 9. And I'm going to skip around in it. It says, David asks, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David. And the king said to him, are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king said, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? 
Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. Somebody said, there's still a son. There's still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, he is at the house of Machir, son of Amiel, of Lodibar. Somebody said, we coming out of Lodibar, in Lodibar. And I'm going to read that, go further down. When, when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. Amen. And the verse, last verse says, then Ziba said to the king, your servant will do whatever my lord, the king commands his servant to do. So Mephibosheth et at David's table, like one of the king's son. God bless the reading of this word. You may be seated. Amen. We greet you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God for every opportunity that God allows, because this is his platform and this is his time, and so we give it all back to him. If I should put a topic to this uh, message today, my topic would be when God remembers. When God remembers. Somebody said, God remember when God remembers. Y'all sound kind of slow this morning. When God remembers. God remembers. Amen. Many, many times, guys, I know that a lot of us are, we're waiting on God for something. How many people in the house of God waiting for, on God for something? How many people waiting for God to do a move? How many people waiting for God to make a shift? How many people just waiting on God? So many times in our waiting stages, we tend to lose hope. We tend to forget that the God we serve is bigger. He's wider. He's mightier than anything we go through. Can I encourage somebody this morning? Your presence has a purpose. Amen. You are not an accident. God has orchestrated straighted your very existence listen the bible says that before he knew before he formed you he knew you so therefore he had to know that he was going to create you to be who he created you to be amen and so everything that's allowed in our life is a part of what our process is something that we have to endure. The waiting is a part of the process. We don't want to microwave God's hand. We want to move when God says to move. We want to do when God says to do. So no matter what you might be going through in your life, no matter the rejection, no matter the situation you have to bear, no matter the circumstance, because you have relationship with God, no man can pluck you out of his hand. I don't think I got a church in here this morning. When you have relationship with God, nobody can pluck you out of God's hand. Hallelujah. In John 10, 10, it says the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I want to add something else to it. And he also comes to distract. Hallelujah. If he can get your mind, he has got you. Because he works with what you give him. Because see, out of the abundance of the, the heart, the mouth shall speak. So that's why when we say things, we got to be... Be careful. Even if, if sometimes we say, oh, I'm just joking. No, you can't be joking when you're speaking from a place uh, because the Bible says you have this treasure in earthen vessels. Amen. And so you have a treasure on the inside of you. So the devil wants to distract us. He wants us to lose hope. And then when we get discouraged, we can forget about all the promises that God gave to us. We can forget about everything that was ever spoken over our lives. We have to know that God thinks about us and he wants the best for us. He wants the best for us. You know, there's a thing that we used to say in school, good, better, and best. And God wants the best for us. His promises to us are yes and amen. He promised that he will never leave us, neither will he forsake us. Amen. In Genesis chapter 8, as we read the scripture, the Bible says that God remembered Noah. Come on, they were locked in a boat for four in the ark for 40 days and 40 nights and it was impossible for God to forget them because God is the one that gave them that 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 assignment and and because Noah completed the assignment he found favor in the eyes of God listen here to me this morning just because the scripture says that God remembered Noah 
doesn't mean that God has forgotten Noah. Just because you don't hear your name calling now don't mean that God has forgotten you. Because God says, I will never leave you, mama. Neither will I forsake you. Listen, your name don't have to be in the lights to know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All you need to do is know that God will not leave me, neither will he forsake me. He loves you that much that he will, he will cause a flood to protect you and when you're in the ark nothing that comes around you will be able to destroy you come on somebody so i'm here to tell you i don't know what your ark is this morning hallelujah i don't know what the storm is this morning but what i know glory be to god is that i'm in the ark and when i'm in the ark i'm protected when i'm in the ark i don't have to worry when i'm in the ark he will remember me come on somebody so i gotta stay in the ark. The Bible says that God remembered Noah. Somebody say, God remember me. Come on, tell him, God remember me. Remember me this morning. See, when God remember you, there will be favor by God and favor by man. Come on, somebody. We listen, they were in the ark 40 days and 49. That's 300 days in the ark. My God, there was just about seven to eight people in the ark. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But God remembered Noah and favor found everything that was attached to Noah. Come on, somebody. I don't know who you're following this morning, but I'm following the true and living God because he said, my sheep will hear my voice and a stranger they shall not follow. Listen to me carefully. When he remembered Noah, the waters came over and the wind blew the waters and the waters receded. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, my, oh my God in heaven, Jesus. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but God says I'm going to cause the wind of heaven to blow in your situation. I'm going to cause the wind of heaven to blow in your circumstance. Just continue to trust me because they that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. They shall not faint. I want the wind to blow this morning. I feel the wind blowing in my direction. Come on. The wind, the lack that you've been going through is over. Hallelujah. The sickness that's been bothering your body is over. The rejection is over. The deception is over. The manipulation is over. The lying is over. Hallelujah. The curse is broken and it's over because the wind is blowing in your direction and God remembers you God remembers you come on I don't know I don't know I don't know if that's for anybody this morning but when God gave me this message this was for me because he remembered me he remembered me he gave me trouble for my trouble come on somebody and everything that you lost is going to come right back to you oh yes somebody why because he remembered you he's a restoring God and when there's restoration there is renewal and there is favor because how what well, what is restoration to restore means to rebuild and to repair so God says, I can rebuild, I can repair, I can redeem the times that you have lost. Hey, hey, she can't But God says, you have to stand strong in the storm. No matter what way it pushes you, you just got to go with the wind. Because that's my wind, baby, that I'm blowing in your direction. You're, listen, you shall not fail. You shall not fall. Because the wind of heaven is blowing in your direction. In Genesis 30, we read the story about the two sisters, Leah and Rachel. Leah was having babies after babies after babies, but Rachel was barren. The Bible says that Rachel could not conceive. She couldn't have no child. And in those days, it was a disgrace. But the Bible says that God heard Rachel. God heard Rachel. What did he hear? He didn't hear her saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. 
But I know he heard Rachel say, you are the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. I'm asking you to touch my womb and cause me to give birth, cause a barren soul to come forth. And the Bible says that God heard Rachel and God delivered and God remembered Rachel. And the Bible says that Rachel gave birth to a son. And what was his name? Joseph. And the Bible says he even goes further to let us know that Joseph was the one with the, the, the one that they put in the pit. So even after you give birth, hey, Shamando, the devil will still try to kill the promise that God has given you. Oh, Shama, glory be to God. But you got to know that everything that you go through is for a purpose. Hey, Shama, glory to God. And the purpose that you have to endure. Because see, what happened is, what the devil thought is that when he put Joseph in the pit, that God would forget about Joseph. But God remembered even Joseph in the pit. Come on, somebody. I wish I had a church in here this morning. See, it's more than just Rachel. You got to think about her lineage. You got to think about what comes from her. So even your children, you got to cover them under the blood of Jesus and ask God, remember my children, God. Cover them, God, under the blood of Jesus. Joseph was in the pit. She gave birth. God remembered Rachel. And as he remembered Rachel, he also remembered Joseph. And as Joseph was in that pit, there was purpose for the pit. <laughs> the pit served the purpose. It was only a pit stop. <laughs> it got glory to God. Because see, Joseph had to be in the pit. He had to endure the pit. He had to go through the pit experience. If there's no pit, there's no palace. You have to endure the pit experience. You can't work it faster. You can't go faster than God is doing it. You gotta stand in that pit and cry out out with everything that's in you loose me and let me go and everything that's been binding you shall loose you in the name of Jesus the pit even in the pit God remembers his people even in death God remembers his people even in the dump God remembers his people. I'm here to tell you that God hears the faith cry. Listen, the prayer that your mother prayed 25, 34 years ago is some of those prayers that's trickling down, that's coming down on your life right now. So mothers and fathers, as you get up in the days, as you walk at night, begin to pray for your children. Because I believe that Rachel, when God bless her, I believe every day she got up and she said, Lord, bless my womb. Lord, bless this son. Bless this daughter. Whatever she didn't know what she was going to have. But she was saying, God, bless him. Bless him 40 years. Bless him 50 years. Bless him 60 years. Because she knew that this was a promise. Because nobody, when you're barren, don't have children. So when you are barren, glory be to God. Just like Hannah. Hannah was barren. And God heard her cry. God heard her prayer. And he remembered remembered her and came into her and she gave forth a son named Samuel. God will remember you. You got to trust him. You got to trust God. You got to trust God. You got to believe that his promises to you are yes and amen. You got to know that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you ask or even think because he is the God that is intentional listen you cannot predict God he's unpredictable you don't know what he's gonna do tomorrow you can plan but God will erase so we gotta trust God hallelujah we gotta believe God we gotta stand on his word we gotta know that he can do anything that we desire for him to do I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning hallelujah maybe I'm speaking to my 
myself. But I'm telling you, thank you, God. Oh, God, I thank you this morning. I bless you this morning, God. I honor you this morning, God. I give you every glory. I give you every praise, God. You are worthy to be praised, God. And you are so worthy to be adored. Purpose. There is a purpose for every pain. But God will remember you. The winds will blow. Hallelujah. The billows will roll. But he said, peace shall be still. Hallelujah. God is about to put you on somebody's mind. He's going to restore you and bring things back together again. Watch this. In the Bible, Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and started to run. She started to run when she heard that they died. And in the midst of running, he fell and he became lame. Come on, somebody. How many people lame in the house this morning? Do we have any lame folks in the house this morning? He became lame, not because of something that he did, but because of something that happened to him. And in the midst of being lame, listen, he ended up in a place called Lodibar. This would have been a child that would have been living in the palace, but he ended up in Lodibar, a place of dump, a place of slum. Hallelujah. A place where they where they put all the stuff that they don't want, the, the guck and the muck. And he ended up living there. But guess what, y'all? God remembered him. God put uh, something in David's heart. Uh, and David said, is there any other son from the house of Jonathan? Is there anyone else uh, from my brother Jonathan? Because we know the relationship with David and Jonathan. And the Bible says that when he, when someone, Ziba said to him, yes, there was. Uh, and he called, he went in and Ziba went to Lodibar. And when they found Mephibosheth, uh, hallelujah, the Bible says that favor was his portion. And God, the Bible says that they took him from Lodibar and took him to the, the king's table. And he sat and he ate with David. I'm here to tell you today that your Lodibar experience, hallelujah, is getting ready to come to an end. Your Lodibar experience is getting ready to be expired. Your Lodibar experience is getting ready to be over. You just got to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen he shall give you the desires of your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Listen, Mephibosheth never dreamt that he would be at the king's table. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I don't care, hallelujah, who's in the White House. Because I know that if God desire for us to step in that White House, he will make a way out of no way. What are you saying to me, Dr. J? I'm saying to you today that there is nothing too good that he will withhold from them that love him. I'm saying to you today that they that diligently seek him, hallelujah, will find him. I'm saying to you today that the joy of the Lord must be your strength in the, in the time of waiting. Hallelujah. The Bible says that as we thought about Rachel, she did get a little jealous. She did get a little insecure. Hallelujah. But God said, I will take your mistakes and turn them into a miracle. I will cause some great things uh, to begin to happen because God know her heart uh, that as much as she got a little jealous by the Cedric, uh, it wasn't for a bad cause uh, she just wanted to have a child uh, glory be to God as much as uh, um, Mephibosheth uh, was eating the slum God know that it wasn't his fault uh, he just wanted to get out uh, hallelujah as much as uh, Noah was in the ark uh, over 300 days uh, he just wanted to go see a little bit of land uh, so God remember Remember them. Glory to God. God has not forgotten about you. His promises to you are yes and amen. I don't know about the church today, but do I have a church that is ready to say, God, for you I live and for you I die. Your promises are true, God. I'm standing on your word. I'm believing your word. I won't look back now. Forward ever, God. Backward never, God. Because defeat will not be an option in my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It won't be an option in my life. Glory to God. God remembered Mephibosheth. God remembered Mephibosheth. Lodibar will not be your experience anymore. Hallelujah. Just think about it, saints. God put something on the king's heart that caused him to think about something 
and low their power. Favor is our currency. It don't matter how much money you have in the bank. When you die, you cannot take that money with you. So you might as well ask God for the right currency. And the right currency is favor. The Bible says my anger is but only for a moment. But my favor is for a lifetime. So I would prefer to be on the right side of God. That's why lately I don't even ask God to bless my finances. I just say, God, whatever your will, let it be done. Because honestly, some of the things that happen in my life, it's not finances that did it. It's the favor of God. Come on, come on. I'm bragging on him right now. Whether you like it or not, you can talk about me all day. But it's not money that did it. It's a necessity. But it's not the money that did it. It's not the money that why I'm still in the United States. <laughs> Glory to God. It's not the money why, 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 why I got my degree. It's because of the favor of God that's on my life. And so I would prefer to have the favor of God than, than worry about finances. Favor versus finances. I'll take favor anytime, God. Because your favor lasts forever. And so I just want to encourage somebody this morning. That you've been taking the back seat for too long. <laughs> you've been struggling for too long. And you know why we struggle sometimes, Sister Alice? It's because we don't understand the God that lives in us. We don't understand that he's sovereign. He's the lion and the lamb. Come on, somebody. He can be rough and he can be sweet. Listen, we don't understand that he's the great I am. We don't understand that he's a wonder in our soul. We don't understand, hallelujah, how he sent his only begotten son to die in our stead. We don't even understand how he walked the earth and did miracles after miracles, signs and wonders. We say it, but do we get it? Do we really believe it? Because it's what you believe that puts a demand on your future. Glory be to God. Because what you say that puts a demand on your next. Your next can be now if you're still talking puny, if you're still wishy-washy. But your next will be now, baby. When you can say in the enemy's face, devil, take your best shot because God remembers me. Take, do whatever you want to do in my house. Do whatever you want to do in the shower because God remembers me and favor is my portion. God is an eternal being. He created and he preserves all things. He's the restorer of my soul. So the Bible says, yea, though I might walk through the valley. It's temporary, baby. Um, listen, I don't worry about the valley or the pit experience. Yes, you might panic for a quick minute, but when you remember the God that you serve, when you remember that he is God all by himself, and he said, I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you. When you remember that he's with me, even in the midst of if I put myself in hell, when you remember that he's God Almighty, you can walk this thing out and you can look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Know that all your help comes from God. So you don't look to the left or to the right, but you look to the hills and you say, God, in thee do I trust. Never put me to shame. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. God, because you are my refuge yes, and my strength. Yes, you are a very present helper in time of need. Yes. Father God, I thank you that I was created in your image. Yes. I am fearfully and wonderfully created. Oh God, I thank you, God, that you took a minute to think about me, God, before you even formed me. Come on, somebody. Let's take get personal with him. Come on, get intimate with him. God, you got to bring his words right back to him. Because see, the reason why we fail is because we're using our opinions. Our opinions don't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is his word. He says, I value my word above my name. My word. David said, thy word, Lord, have I hid 
in my heart that I will not sin against thee. Your word, God, have I hid in my heart. Your word, God, have I hid in my heart. Come on, somebody, just say, your word, God, have I hid in my heart. Walk with me daily, God, as I carry this word in me. That doesn't mean that the enemy is not going to try you. But just always remember that God remembers you. Listen, you're still alive because God remembers you. You woke up this morning because God remembered. He remembered Germany. He remembered Rihanna. He remembered Mama Dunstan. He remembered you. He remembered you. That's why he blew his breath back into your body. And he said, rise, wake up, and go forward and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. He remembers you. Listen, if you're barren in your body, God says, I will do a new thing in you. Listen, age is nothing but a number to God. God don't worry about if you're 60, 70, 90, or 100. Listen, listen, he can still do a new thing in you. He can do it even when you least expect it. Listen, that's the kind, he's unpredictable, mama. And so he works behind behind the scene and at the age of a hundred oh god glory to god i see in the bible that he caused somebody to get birth come on i don't know about you today but i feel a spiritual birth getting ready to happen i feel like he's getting ready to impregnate somebody with a promise and the promise must come forth come on lay your hands on your own stomach come on rub that stomach come on put your imaginary mind and say god the promises of God are yes and amen in my life. Come on, come on, God. Spiritual birth, spiritual birth. Remember me, God. Remember me, God. God, remember my mother. Remember my father. Remember my brother. Remember my sister. Remember my wife. Remember my husband. Remember my children. God, remember me. Remember everything that is attached to me, God. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, every minute, I need thee. Oh, bless me now. 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 Oh, Yeboko Shaba, bless me now. My Savior, I need thee. I need thee. I need thee. I need thee. Come on. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Oh, Shaman Dekosa, if you ain't filled with the Holy Ghost this morning, come on. Just lay your hands. Lay your hands. He you says, for me, like a river of living water, it's going to flow. He remembers you. He remembers you. He remembers you. He remembers you. Remember your people, God. Remember your people, God. Remember your people, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Yes, God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 What am I thanking him for? I'm thanking him for what's coming. I'm thanking him in advance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, God. We thank you. We bless you. We bless you. We honor you. We honor you. We worship you. We worship you. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Oh.
God, that you're a member of God. We thank you, God, that we can listen. Hoshande Kosanda Basata. I don't know about you, but I feel I feel something just came in the building. Oh, shake him do. Mande seto robosa. Yeke sete. He cut on our posa. He can do the posa. Mamandi a posa. anxious about anything but everything with prayer supplication with thanksgiving I believe that when you thank God from the depths of your heart favor has no other choice but to begin to find you I believe that when you are thankful there will be gratefulness I believe that Ooh, ooh. As much as Rachel got a little jealous, Mama, she was still grateful to God. She wasn't, she wasn't angry. She was jealous that like God bless me too, Lord. Give bless my womb, God. Oh, Shande Kosa. What is it that you are believing God for? He just stepped into the building. The presence of favor just came into the building. He said, you can have what your heart desires, but you got to make sure you're acting correct. I believe that somebody's mother just got saved. Begin to put your address in the atmosphere. Begin to put your address. Begin to put your address in the atmosphere. He said, listen, your address is the ark. Hallelujah. He'll make a covenant with you. He said, I'm covering your home, even when you're not there. That's why no thief, no gunman can come in. Because he said, I remembered you. I've been covering you. I've been keeping you. Oh, He said, begin to put your address. Put your address. Listen, why do I say address? Because you live there. You house there. And everything that's in there is going to be covered. Everything. Listen, no sickness can overcome your home. Come on. Come on. Speak it. I speak it now. Even to my own son. Healing. In the name of Jesus. We don't call no sickness. We bind it. We rebuke it. We don't call no lack. Lack is not your portion. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. You shall have favor from God. Come on. You shall have favor from God. You shall have favor from God. You shall have favor from God. conversation and in the conversation I heard the Lord tell Jeremiah Jeremiah before I formed you I knew you oh oh that is enough to let me know that God desired the best for me you and I are no different from Jeremiah don't you know that the devil goes to God to try to interfere with you? But God will instigate <laughs> your life because he knows that you are built to last. He knows that you will take a licking and keep on ticking. He knows that you can handle everything that the enemy is coming at you with. He would not say, do you consider my servant Larry? Do you consider my servant, servant Cedric? He would not even put you out there if he knew you couldn't handle it. We 
serve an almighty God. He makes no mistakes. And so, if he said, devil, do you want, have you considered my servant, Allison? Heaven backs you. Heaven protects you. Heaven covers you. He wouldn't put you in an ark and leave you stranded. Why would he put you in an ark and then cause you to drown? Oh, Shabba. Why would he leave you in the fire and then cause you to get burned to death? Yes, Shabba. Why would he put you in Zodibar and leave you there to die? Oh, Shabba. My God. Oh. Why would he put you in a pit? Better yet, why would he put you in the lion's den and cause the lion to eat you up? He makes no mistakes. He's intentional in all his ways. He said, your thoughts are not my thoughts. I don't think the way you think. Because if I do, I can't be your God. And if you know everything about me, I'm not your God. If you know what I'm going to do tomorrow, you are your God. So I'm not going to allow you your foot to fall, Sister Alice. I won't allow anything to cause you to stumble because I've given you the ability to say no. I've given you the ability to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I've given you everything that you need. He said, I left you a comforter. Are you allowing him to comfort you? Feed him and he will grow. Oh, Shabbat, thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, feed, feed him. How do I feed? How do I feed a comforter? Bring faith, walk by faith and not by sight. Use the word of God on a daily basis. He's let the word go before you. The more you study to show yourself approved, it's not about preaching, it's about living. So when you study, when you meditate on his word day and night, you're feeding him. <laughs> Just like when you get hungry, you get up and you go in the kitchen and you grab a bite to eat. The spirit, the spirit of God needs food so he can grow, grow, grow. And if he's not hearing the word, he will shrink, shrink, shrink. Because it's the word that builds him up. Because he is the word. He's the truth. And he's the life. He's the resurrection. And no man can come to the Father except they come through him. So you need to feed him. Feed him. Not just on a Sunday morning. Not just on a Tuesday night. Not just on a Wednesday night. But every single day, watch this. Don't you got to eat food every day? Everybody in here eats every day, right? If it's even drinking a glass of water, you do something. Something goes to your mouth, right? Unless you want to fast, that's different. But the fast is not forever. Nobody fasts during the 65 days. So every day you get up, you got to eat something. You put something in your stomach, right? That's how the spirit needs to be fed. I don't know why God, me, God got me going there. Because this is not even a part of the message. That is how the spirit needs to be fed. And the Bible says, when you feed him, it'll be like a river of living water. Yes, yes. Shabba, he begin yes, to rise up in you. Yes, and so this is what happened now. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit rise up yes. and lift up a standard yes. before you. Come on, somebody. And so no matter what the enemy says, yes. listen, you're going to beat that thing. Listen, you might have to fight your way out, but you're going to beat that thing because you're going to say, thy word have I hid in my heart, devil, that I shall not sin against thee. I am the righteousness of God. No way that's born against me will prosper. Listen, you're giving him the word. You have to listen. And the more you rather say, resist the devil and he shall flee. Because when he sees the word, when he hears the word, that's why he tried to distract you. See, if he can cause you to be distracted, that's why I don't know how people work on Sundays. 
I don't know how people work on times when it's time to give God time. He only asks of us a few days. Two days? He says, study every day. But two days, he says, can I get these two days from you? And so you have to... Mm, thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Mm. You have to be so sold out for God mm -hmm. that no matter if somebody puts finances before you, the, the devil will use the very thing that, you're, that you speak that you need uh -huh. to distract you. Jesus. He doesn't have the power to know what's going on in you unless you speak it. When you speak it, now he has the power to say, okay, let's get that job going so that she can take that job. Or let's get, let's just make some lack in her finances right now and just have a man come chore some money. Oh, I'm going to take you out on a date. And so the devil will do these things. Oh, but I'm supposed to be in church on Sunday. Oh, it's all right. You can miss one Sunday. The pastor not going to miss you. It's not about the pastor. It's about your relationship with God. Because if you want God to fight for you, you got to fight for you. Yeah. You can't be easily distracted. He remembers you, but there's something that you have to do. You got to walk by faith. You got to believe. You got to trust him. You got to know that he's able to keep you from falling. You believe that, right? And so when you believe it by faith, favor will begin to find you. Somebody give God praise in here. Somebody get his quiet up in here. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm done. I'm going to close out right now. But, you know, one of the things that God showed me this week, you know, and he just reminded me of it while I was talking there, is that we should not be easily influenced. We should be the influence. We can't allow the least little thing just to influence us away from God. We have to be the influence mm -hmm. because he's created us yes. with influence. Yes, Men, boy, girl, woman, we all are created with influence and that influence is the Holy Spirit. So we have to make sure that we understand what God is doing in our lives. And if you don't understand it, just stand still and trust him. Stand still and believe him. Stand still and know that he's able to do what he said he will do. Just like he did for Rachel. He remembered her. And God says, I remember you. I remember you. I remember you. I have not forgotten the assignment that I've placed on your life. Come on, just give God praise in here. Make a sound in here. See, I don't like the deadness. I, I, like, I like to hear, I like to feel the spirit moving. Come on, just make a sound in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let the wind blow in your life this morning. Let the wind of heaven blow in your life this morning. Come on, I know you're getting it. I know you're li quietly listening. But I want, I, want, I want to know that you're getting it. I want to see that you're getting it. I want to know that you're not being influenced by the enemy, but you are in influencing your atmosphere you're influencing your circumstances because you God remembers you and because he remembers you favor is your portion amen 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 favor is your portion favor is your portion favor will find you even when nobody thought about you <laughs> even in rejection favor will find you Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.